All right, Uncle Sam FM here, and I have started a game with my new database update where I have added FC Cincinnati and I have added Nashville SC to MLS. They joined the league in my file in the first season, and I have taken over Nashville SC. They are, um, well, when they join the league, they'll be the closest MLS team to me where I live in real life, and so... Um, debating on whether or not I should adopt them as my team, right? It'd be hard to imagine doing that, but uh, for the purposes of this game, I thought I'd take them over. Now, um, in this, I do have, in this file, I do have Nashville SC's real-life squad, um, which they are currently, in real life, they're a USL team, which is the second division. However, the reality is, is that a USL team, the, their squad was nowhere near good enough to compete uh, in MLS. <clears throat> so um, I went ahead and filled out their designated player um, slots and um, added a couple guys that were f um, that are free agents in real life. And, you know, the reality is they probably would at least pick up some of these guys. So I have, um, just to go through a few of the additions that I added to this squad, um, Kosuke Chimera who was a fullback. Um, he plays mostly on the left, actually, but I have him on the right. Um, and then I also went and got Chris Clute, who is a, again, he's kind of, I think he plays kind of left back. I have him on the left. Um, and then my DP spots, DP players, I got Alex Song, who was a free agent in, I don't know if he is still in real life, but uh, I went ahead and signed him. He's Cameroonian, 29. Um, Max Meyer from Germany. Um, I think he actually in real life joined the squad, but at the beginning of my game, he was a free agent. So I went ahead and added him. Um, he'll play in center mid. And then I'm Bruno Mota, uh, another guy who was a free agent at the beginning of my file. So I got signed him on as a young designated player. So um, I also went and got uh, Samir Nasri, who is a... Um, oh, I, sorry, Bruno Mota is not a DP. Sorry, but he is... He does have one of the larger salaries you can have in MLS um, without being a DP. And then I got Samir Nasri, who last I saw was still available. Um, he had that um, ban for doping. But in this game, whatever update I have, the ban is not there. So um, so those are the DP guys. I also got Dilly Duca, who uh, was an American free agent. Um, and went and signed, and well, Kenwin Jones was a Trinidad, uh, Trinibagian, well, how do you pronounce it? Trin, Trinbagonian, uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. He actually, I think, retired after last season, but, um, and I think he's set to retire this year. Let's see if his, yeah, so he retires at the end of this season. But, um, when I added him, so I've got him, and then I got one, got Charlie Davies, who is a, um, you're an American, you'll remember him. He uh, was a, I think he scored a goal against Spain, it's either against Spain or against Brazil in the um, in our Gold Cup run in 2000, not Gold Cup, Confederations Cup run in 2009. Then he broke his leg. Um, was out at 3 a.m., got drunk, somebody was driving and broke his leg, and so he never really got back to full form. But he was available, so I added him to the squad um, and then started the game. And the pretty pretty obviously, I'm really weak along the back, which I'm pretty used to. Usually they start with the Dynamo, Houston Dynamo, and they don't have much in the back either. So, um, so I went ahead and added um, Borswick Jackson from on loan from Manchester United. He... Um, not great you know he's he's okay he's a decent mls defender probably well he's you know he's a quality mls defender um the big thing is his, his determination is pretty poor so um but i was desperate and they were willing to loan him so i brought him in he'll for this season he'll at least start and the reality is is that pretty much i don't want any of these guys long term there's nobody on this squad that i want long term um Nasri's he's in his upper 20s so yeah well I'll Meyer and Moda I'll hang on to as long as I can right they're both young but um everybody else is either in their 30s nearing their 30s or they're never ever going to be good so 
Um, so it'll be a pretty much an entire rebuilding project. But I have begun my preseason. Uh, as you can tell, my I went on a tour of Columbia, I think, um, and that did not go well. <laughs> I um, got killed in my second game, and then but I did end it well with a win over Tunja, uh, five to zero. Dominated that one. Team started to finally get the our tactic down. Um, Hit a, you know, hit some decent form, you know, had some decent results. Um, now I'm, and I'm getting ready to play the final game of our preseason tournament, the Simple Invitational. Uh, I actually am in position to win it. I'm getting ready to play Portland. Portland has won their first two games, uh, so they have maximum points. I have a win and a draw, and so I'm at four, and we are getting ready to play Portland. So I have to win. It's got to be a win. If I win, I'm the champ. If I draw or lose... I finish, well, probably, well, I don't win. So um, while it's just an exhibition tournament, it's not that big of a deal. You know, we want to win everything that we can. So um, I'm going to, I've, in my natural rotation process, my I do have my first squad going. But um, at striker, Kenwin Jones got injured. He's going to be out for oh, 10 days-ish. Um and so I went ahead and stuck in Brandon Allen. He's not terrible. Uh, he actually has had a decent preseason. He scored some goals. He's got 13 finishing, which is actually better than Charlie Davies's. So I'm going to go ahead and let Brandon Allen step in, and we're going to play this game and see what happens. Uh, I do play a 4-3-3 possession tactic. Um, I have other tactics. I have a 4-1-4-1, and those are, I, those are my two tactics that I pretty much live with but I I, I kind of like to play with this third tactic right now I'm looking at a 4-2-1-3 wide um, which I'm thinking about using when teams come at me with two strikers and, a, and, an, and an attacking center mid so like a 4-4-2 diamond uh, formation but right now I'm going to roll with this we'll see how this goes um, don't expect to win because my team is I mean, I've got a decent front six, right? My three midfielders and my three forwards are respectable. Um, Nasri, obviously, is he's going to be one of the best players in MLS, and Meyer also. Song is very good. Mote is very good. Like, I might have the best midfield in MLS. Well, one of the top four or five midfields. Duca is serviceable. Not great, but pretty good. Um, Kenwin Jones and Charlie Davies are okay. You know, they're, they're, they'll hold their own. They're not going to wow anybody, but they'll get the job done. But my back line is really poor. Uh, so that's an area that I need to work on, you know, quickly. So um, Portland is probably going to be a little reserved. All they need is a draw. They can get out of here with a draw and they win the trophy. Uh, which is this is their home field although I'm listed as the home team um, so I'm gonna leave things as they are right now uh, which I press I, I close down heavy I've up my tempo so I'm gonna try and go and get a goal and then see what happens um, everything is yes okay whatever pick the team that feels like my players can adapt to any situation so here we go. So uh, as this game is being played here, it looks like they're pulling, being a little more aggressive than I would have thought. They're getting their fullbacks forward. Crossing the box, Pickens picks it out. So let's get going here. So right now, uh, this I'm playing this game right after England finished the group stage. They lost to Belgium today of the World Cup. Um, Valeri has picked up a little knock. And the yellow card, I guess they're going to leave him on, though. Um, it's been an interesting World Cup. You know, Obviously, the U.S. didn't make it, and that really upsets me. Um, I debated whether or not to even watch it. Um, but I've actually kind of enjoyed it because I found... You know, in old and past World Cups, uh, of course, you know, you've got a team in it, so you want all the results to go the way that would be the best for your team. So I'm 
you know, cheering for all the good teams to lose to get put out. Um, but this year, they're not in it. Ooh, no chance there, but they didn't finish. Um, and so this year, I was kind of, you know, I want to, I want to see the best teams go. I want, I want, I want the best teams to advance. And um, so I was a little disappointed that Germany didn't. Obviously, Mexico is a rival, so I wanted them, I wanted them to get put out. Um, thought for sure it was going to happen after. They went down 3-0 to Sweden. Germany just needed one goal against Korea. Couldn't pull it off. Um, and then they gave up two at the end. Oh, we got a guy with a yellow, Woodbury. But it has been exciting. Spain had to fight, claw and scrape just to advance. Um, Argentina almost got put out um so the world cup's been you know it's been fun it's gonna be interesting to see so far from what i've seen belgium looks like the best team um obviously croatia has played really well so yeah it's gonna be um we'll have to see if argentina can get things together they not looked very good tactically um kind of bottled up messy portugal we're going to be kind of fun to watch as they Blanco is injured. They're having some injury issues over there on the other side of the field. All right, come over to Meyer, to Duca. Allen hitter couldn't put it away, but that's good. Playing well so far. Been watching my passing numbers. I want to try and hit 700 passes. Don't think I'm going to be able to do it with this team. Also, I usually play my both of my wings as inside forwards, but I've set Nasri up as a winger, I'm trying to get him out into some space. Allen with another header, saved by Sanchez. Let's see if my corner kick magic can work. Song to Meyer to Allen. There it is, goal. So now we're ahead. I am going to go contain, and because of my instructions, contain for me is really more like defensive. Let's see, Meyer lays it off to Allen. Allen, the finish. He, um, that was a good decision by me. All right, so one nothing. We are, we are close to winning our first ever competition. This will be the first ever competition victory. First trophy for Nashville SC. Pretty sure at all. No matter what level. They started just a little history about Nashville FC as we begin the second half here. Um, after the Nashville Metros, which was a PDL franchise, which is like the fourth level on the American pyramid, they folded. <clears throat> and so some guys got together and... and they wanted to start a club and pattern it after Barcelona in that they wanted to be a fan-owned club. So they started Nashville FC, and it started as an NPSL team, the National Premier Soccer League team, which I have in this file. Um, there was a shot that was wide. So they competed in... Um, Competed in NPSL for a couple seasons. Then they decided you, they got some an ownership group involved um, that wanted to start a professional team in Nashville, which the NPSL is amateur, amateur semi-pro. <clears throat> and so they, um, the ownership group, got with the Nashville FC group, and they com they combined and created Nashville SC. And there still is a fan. Um, owned component of it. I'm pretty sure that the fans vote for a board member or something along those lines. And so then you had MLS start opening up the expansion process, looking for bids for teams, ownership groups, to purchase a expansion franchise. And so the group from Nashville SC, actually it was a separate ownership group. Um, there was an ownership group that got together, bid, and so 
there's some link between Nashville SC and the MLS Nashville ownership group. And so I'm not sure what that link is. It may be that they Nashville SC is not what the MLS team looks like, but um, it has been kind of fascinating to watch because it's relatively close for me. And I've got a yellow card for one of my center backs. That's not good. Both my center backs now on yellow. Because uh, this Nashville group has really been a grassroots effort. They've built a fan base, and um, that's what you like to see. I like to see, you know, th the most well-supported MLS teams started with existing fan bases, groups that were already in place. Um, you know, obviously the Portland Timbers is the most well-known, but Seattle Sounders easily lead attendance every year. FC Cincinnati has been ahead of USL team two or three years now, and they'll be joining the league. And um, they have something like 30 to 40,000 come to every USL game. They're the second division. So um, they would have a higher average attendance than most of the teams in MLS now. So when they get an MLS team, it'll be interesting to see how they do attendance wise and so um yeah it's gonna be i'm, I'm gonna go to a few national sc games well nashville mls whatever 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 they name the club i, I hope they keep nashville sc oh and there it is we win we held on glorious victory um let's look real quick at the match stats Heat map looks pretty good. That's pretty much how I want that to look. Um, so, doubled up their shots. We had seven on target. They did not have a single shot on target. That's beautiful to see. 60% possession. That's, I mean, you're talking Portland is a very good team that dominates possession against most teams they play. Um, 85%, not great. I'll take it. 720 passes. You know, that's, I, I want to get to at least 700 attempted. And then we completed 600 of those. So that's, that's good. Um, yeah, we looked pretty doggone good. This is a good win for us. Um, technically, it's a preseason game, but the AI treats these as competitive matches. So, 